Uh, so I'm super excited for this next one. We have our chief tech expert from Integral, Burton Kelso, who I'll call to the change uh, stage. And he's going to talk about whether or not will AI kill our unlimited imagination. And this is one that I want to make sure that we covered. Like we have tech conferences uh, where we, we talk about bits and, and all this stuff. I want to know about my imagination. So this is cool. All right, everyone. I tend to blabber a lot, so I had to set a timer and cheat, so that way I know how much time I have to speak. So, give you a little bit background about me. My name is Burton Kelso. I am known as a technology expert around the metro area. Reason being is because I've been on the news quite a bit on all of the local stations. I've been on TV stations across the globe talking about technology, and I'm also a national speaker, including a TED speaker. So, guess what my TED talk was on? And I did it this year. Come on. Healthcare. Hair care. Hair care? No, no, no. I, I failed at that one. AI, everyone. Come on. Come on now, get with it. So speaking of AI, is AI going to kill our unlimited imagination? Because obviously as human beings, we imagine a bunch of different things. But one of the things that we need to realize as far as AI is concerned in any technology, that technology needs to be seen as any device that expands our human potential. Doesn't necessarily have to be a computer or a smartphone or any tech device that we're used to in our digital world. It's any device that expands our human potential. Case in point, the wheel. Everyone knows what the wheel is, right? Because we rode on a set of four or maybe two on the way here to the conference center today. That's technology. For me, technology that really expanded my human potential. Well, not this, but you have to think about this. Does anyone know where this scene comes from? 2001, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Does anyone remember the scene with the apes fighting back and forth? There was some bully apes rolling around saying, hey, we're taking all your food and you're doing your stuff. So one ape decided, hey, what, what can I do with this, this bone? So it started beating around and then through imagination, wasn't like, well, heck, I can just beat this and hit other bones. The idea is like, we've got some enemies that we need to deal with that are still in our food. So let me take this current form of technology and use this to beat our oppressors down so that we can be a more happier group of apes. And that's exactly what happened in the movie 2001 in Space Odyssey. And I hate to tell you this, that's kind of my favorite scene in the movie is when, not when they discovered the bone, but when the warring apes came and then the leader ape just came and just like beat the crap out of the other ape, that was my favorite scene. And that kind of tells you a little bit about my wacky personality. But the interesting thing about technology, if you get anything from the movie 2001, it shows that technology is the thing that helps move humans forward. And that was basically, other than the little star baby floating at the end of the movie, which I had no clue what that was all about. Does anyone know about Star Baby sucking his thumb floating around the earth? I have no clue either, but what I took away from the movie was the fact that the monolith was the big black box that would show up at major times of human evolution involving technology. And that is a theme that we need to think about as humans in our lives. Because I think what happens when we encounter new pieces of technology we get scared, don't we? All this chat about AI and what it's going to do. And of course, if I threw out AI and fear, what's the first movie you're going to think of? No one's saying it. Just say it. Terminator. Thank you. Goodness gracious. I'm like, don't come on now. There's no wrong answers here, you know, because there's a slew of them. Blade Runner. It's another movie where people think, well, the robots are going to come alive and they're going to take over us. I uh, remember the movie Alien. With good old Ash, I hope I'm not ruining it. That's a 40-year movie, so if you missed out and I ruined it for you, just tough luck. You need to stay up with your movies, right? Same thing with Ash. Ash was the AI on board, trying to bring the alien back to Earth. Most recently, um, I can say her name, Megan. Anyone seen Megan? Yeah, it started out good, but it just kind of had a flat finish. But again, those are examples of how Hollywood and how fiction shows us and teaches us to be afraid of AI. 
And in that instance, it affects our imaginations because it makes, oh my gosh, AI is here to kill us. But obviously, we know that's not the case. Now, as far as the technology that fueled me as a child and not necessarily helped me get into AI, but kept me entertained for hours, like gaming systems is that beautiful thing. Show of hands, who played with Legos growing up? Still do. Oh my God, my man, I love that, still do. My boys used to, and it was a funny dynamic with my kids. And this shows how amazing Legos fuel our imagination. And with my oldest, my oldest would just grab them out the box, follow the instructions, and would build the Legos. For my youngest son, he would demolish them. And then he would like take the little action figure Legos and because they gave him comfort, or at least his imagination thought that they gave him comfort, he would sleep with like the little Batmans or the little Snoop Supermans because they made him feel comforted. But for me, Legos are the one piece of technology that kept me entertained for hours upon end because this piece of technology helped fuel my imagination to the next level. Because back when I grew up, and I'm pretty old, Legos just came in a box like you see there, where you just had to take them out of the box and the sky's the limit. Now, the Legos that our kids deal with now, I don't even consider those Legos. Because it's basically Star Wars Legos where you put together the Millennium Falcon, which is a chore in itself, but you've got instructions to help that. And there's only one, the pieces they include with those Lego sets are the pieces that are only going to help you build the thing that comes in the box. Same thing if you get Larry or Harry Potter Legos, you're just building Voldemort's whatever, or Hogwarts, maybe the Hogwarts train, depending on the set. So in that aspect, technology isn't really fueling our imagination. So the question is, and I'll ask it throughout the presentation, will AI kill our unlimited imagination? Because there's several things that can happen as far as technology is concerned. If we look at the Lego scenario, we're looking at technology is definitely taking away that creativity because of the way that Lego is driving that technology. Old school Lego, there were no trademarks to purchase or they hadn't evolved that way. So you just got a box like that's shown on the screen and you had to fuel it or fuel your imagination in order to build the stuff that you wanted to create. Current Legos, that technology is driving away our active imagination because there's only one set of Legos that you can purchase if you get the Indiana Jones Lego set, right? Probably gonna be the one with the rock Indy's running away, falling in the Aztec temple. You may get that. If you're unfortunate enough, you may wind up with the Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Lego set, which no one owns, correct? I don't. I'm surprised I own the movie because that movie was so horrible. And, <laughs> and I guess the new one's bad too because no one's seen it. Has anyone seen the latest Indiana Jones movie? Were you aware that a new Indiana Jones movie came out? Yes, I was too, and I didn't rush out to go see it, and I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan. Now, other forms of technology that can help fuel your imagination are action figures. Action figures, you may not see it as technology, but you have something that was crafted. It can be a tool because the Justice League is multi posable, right? Yep. You can pose them around, do the karate chop with Superman or Aquaman, Wonder Woman, or even the Flash or Cyborg. Oh, Cyborg's not even on there. I didn't know that. Well, it's Invisible Cyborg. Didn't you know that? Yeah, he's got the power of invisibility. So he's there, but he's not there, right? But if you look at this tool, which is considered technology, you definitely can use it to create scenarios, especially if you're a kid. If you've seen any of my YouTube videos, I have a ton of action figures in the background. Some of these guys, as a matter of fact, some of the Justice League. But with action figures, another tool, especially in the hands of a child, that can definitely fuel imagination and take it to the next level. 
Let's say that you were more of a DC kid as opposed to a, a Marvel kid. You can make DC fight the characters of the Marvel Universe, something that we would never be able to see on the big screen. But I'm sure if there was enough money to be made, probably going to happen, correct? Definitely. But with the way DC's going, it may not happen because DC movies are definitely tanking it out, right? Except for the Snyder Cut of the Justice League. I think it's awesome. But you have to look at the scenarios when you're a child or even, an, even as an adult, what these tools are doing to fuel your imagination. And so again, I'm gonna ask, can AI ruin our unlimited imagination? Take another piece of example. <laughs> Remember DOS? DOS, and if, when you look at DOS, you look at a technology tool that had no way of making it creative to you as an individual. But the challenges that we have to look at is that sometimes technology needs a, I guess a template, needs an instructor to show us how that piece of technology may be able to fuel our unlimited imagination. And be, believe me, how many of you use DOS? Oh my goodness, more than I thought. DOS at the output, there's no imagination there, right? You're not going to see the graphical user interface that you get with Macintosh and with Windows devices. DOS was boring. So you would think that this piece of technology would not be able to fuel our imagination, but that's simply not true. How many things could you do with DOS? Just somebody yell out, because I know there's some tech guru in here of what you could do with DOS. You got a hand up. Automation. Automation with DOS. That is absolutely right. You uh, could definitely use DOS to run programs such as WordPerfect, Lotus123, and I'm dating myself, right? Because probably a lot of you are like, the hell are those programs? One's a word processor if you weren't familiar with WordPerfect. The other one is a spreadsheet program. That's what Lotus123 is. And now they're dinosaurs. And actually, if you wanted to get them, you could go to internetarchive.org and download those apps to use and relive your days of DOS. But DOS, in my opinion, it sucked because I felt that it stifled imagination because you had to really go to your outside resources to find out how to use DOS. And to be honest, it's why my industry was created because there were people that struggled with technology that obviously need someone to come out and coach them or to fix their current technology. So it's like the argument is with programs like DOS, then obviously it will limit our imagination. But obviously as humans, as we evolved, we're always thinking of things that we can do in order to help move us to the next level. That's why we always turn to technology and are always asking the question, what can we do better? How can we use technology to evolve us to the next level? And so that's why DOS eventually evolved into a Windows or a GUI operating system because sometimes as humans, to get that spark, we need some piece of visual. We need some piece of creativity that's going to allow us to take technology and move it to the next level. So that's why we're in the world of AI and ChatGPT because we need a little boost, a little push to kind of help the creative juices flowing. Everyone here has experienced some form of writer's block or just have been stuck in a place that they couldn't get out of. Isn't that a U2 song? I, yeah, stuck in a moment. There we go, I was about to start singing it. But no, it is close enough, but we all have been stuck in our moments where we need something to push us to get us to the next level. So again, is technology taking away our creativity? using or, or are we losing our capacity to imagine? And if you look at the argument with ChatGPT, Bard and Bing, bada boom, I had to add that in there because you, know, you got the Bing in there, right? But in the case of AI, no, it does not ruin our imagination because it's our imagination that essentially drives AI. If you're out there and you're new to the AI space to advance all you need is 
your imagination to get the stuff that you want. If you look at tools like Midjourney, look at tools like Crayon, which is AI text to art. Also, if you even look at Canva, those it's proof that we need that boost in order to help us be a little bit more creative, but also those tools aren't going to take away our creative process and help and hinder us as far as our imagination is concerned. And I think that's the beautiful thing about AI is the fact that we are getting that boost because we get stuck. And if you look at AI, especially chat, I gotta say it again, chat GPT, Bard and Bing chat, bada boom, um, you are looking at tools that are helping us move to the next level. Now, okay, oh, there we go. And it's our imagination that is very important and that is keeping us around. Because as humans, we face problems that we constantly have to solve, even if they're not technology-based. A problem that we may have to face that me, we may lack a little creativity is, what am I gonna eat for dinner? Or more importantly, what am I gonna fix for dinner? Thankfully, because of tools like Google Chat or Google Home and Alexa AI, we can ask AI those questions. Hey, what's a great recipe for chili? What's a great recipe for beef stew? And it's not that we're losing our imagination. We're basically using our creativity and imagination to take us to the next level. It's building our life experiences through AI and other tools that helps keep our imagination going. Because we don't have to worry about basic needs like figuring out what's for dinner, figuring out how we're gonna get dinner. Because if we go back to the slide with the 2001 Space Odyssey Ape, back in those days, they were foraging for food. Do we have to do that anymore? No, all we have to do is use our creative minds, take our butts to the supermarket and grab some meat and veggies off the shelf. So AI is definitely not hindering or ruining our imagination. It's definitely taking us to the next level of human evolution and allowing us to focus on other things. ChatGPT and other AI tools allow us to focus more on our friends and family than it does our tech devices. Because sometimes when we get stuck in a moment, we get on our smartphones and just graze, as I call it, and look at social media and it may, be, it may be a hindrance to our imagination. But with AI, that's not to say that you won't get on social media. You won't spend time on your devices looking for problems, or problems that you have and ways to solve those problems. Because you can just go to an AI chatbot, you can ask it a question, and it's gonna generate a response for you. What? better way to live life. Because I am so happy that we're not living back in the 1800s. Although we've got shows like Bridgerton and all of the romance periods, frankly, number one, all of those people stunk in that period, right? No, no baths. I hate stinkiness, so I don't want to be in that. But also, we don't have the tools to help fuel us. We had a few great minds back in those periods but it wasn't easily accept, accessible as everybody. If you wanted an ideal for dinner, you had to go to your servants and say, hey, what do I want? What can I have for dinner? And they would have to figure it out. Now, heck, we can go get drive through We can ask our smart devices for ideas for foods. And what's even better, since the template has been built with recipe books as far as food's concerned, let's say you've got to fix a computer program or fix your automobile. There, are, there is a template for all of that. So if the written word in the form of an auto repair book or a Google site, or if you go to Google to recipes.com and it's not quite what you want, we've got the process started. So then we can use our brains to be more creative and to think of things that we could do to improve the meals and the other things that we need to get off the internet. Now, does anyone read the book Zarya of the Dawn? Does anyone know about this? I feel so awesome because I feel like I know something that you guys don't. 
There's probably somebody out there that knows it that they just don't want to say it, just to see if I know what I'm talking about. This Zarya of the Don, and I forget the owner, I think it's um, Keisha, I think her last name's Keisha something. But anyway, the whole purpose of this book is that it was created exclusively with Mid Journey. So everyone's like, let me say that again. The entire comic book was created with Mid Journey. And just for you newbies out there, everyone in here knows what Mid Journey right, is, right? Yes, it was created with AI. Text, I want a city landscape with um, like the shine or the sun shining through the clouds, and you know, I want this. I want this layout. Mid Journey is able to make that happen instantly. So the whole fight with this comic book, or the idea that you need to take away with this comic book, is the simple fact that someone used their imagination, didn't necessarily draw the art from scratch, but had the wherewithal to come up with their imagination to create this comic book and to have it done by AI. It's pretty, da pretty dang awesome, isn't it? I know I couldn't do it, and I'm too lazy to draw that type of artwork, so I'd rather have AI do that for me. But the challenge that we ran into, the whole creative aspect, is the fact that the creator of this comic book tried to copyright the artwork that was generated by Midjourney and claim it as her own content. And obviously we know now the Supreme Court says that you cannot copyright AI-generated art. So now it's just out there. And if you, I guess, want to add on to Zarya of the Dawn, you can just take that comic book and just run with it at your own. Because even though this person created the character, the artwork's still out there and you could still use it as your own. Another good example of how AI or how imagination has driven AI. So Jason... Alan, I believe, is the person, created this piece of artwork. And I'm not sure if it was Mid Journey or one of the text that AI tools like Crayon or even Canva. But as you can see there off to the side of the screen, it won first place at the Colorado State Fair. Pretty gosh darn awesome, isn't it? But it ain't, it ain't uh, Jason's. It's AI. It can't be used to win contests. But you have to look at the core of what we're looking at on the screen, which is someone used their unlimited imagination to come up with this artwork. And basically the artwork is the theater of the, I think it's a spiritual theater is what that's supposed to stand for because it's in French. But if you want to correct me, you feel free to do so because sometimes I don't even know what I'm talking about. I get like AI sometimes. I start to hallucinate and just throw stuff out just to see if it'll stick. But anyway, as far as our creativity is concerned, these are instances where we can show that technology can help us go to places that we couldn't even imagine going to. And I wonder what happened to poor Jason. I want to know, I want to know the story of who was runner up. Who was the person that was so sure that my artwork is going to win the Colorado State Fair and here comes Jason with his fake art and they won, it won the State Fair. So I think the story should be, did Jason get to keep the award? And who was runner-up? Because obviously that person should have won rather than Jason who cheated. There you go. Anyone familiar with the song Savages AI? And I forget the group's name. All Altoona or something like that. Anyway, they have an AI version that has that they included Jay-Z in with the song. Only problem is that ain't Jay-Z. It's AI generated Jay-Z. And if I had access to my laptop, I'd play the song for you. But anyway, I would challenge you to either Google AI generated songs or at least listen to Savage's AI just to understand that this song lyrically was created by one of the members of the group, but vocally it's Jay-Z and it sounds like Jay-Z. And I can understand that this version of Savage's AI was put out not to make money, but to set an example of how far AI has come. And this song came out of April of this year, not something that was just released in September. Savage's is an incredible rap track. I have to throw that in there. Hip hop, I should say, because I mean, it's not talk. It's not Jay-Z doing his usual. I'm a gangster and I'm going to shoot people and blah, blah, blah. It's just 
kind of a spiritual song talking about, I forget why they're talking about why they're the savages, but anyway, it's a worthwhile listen to to show how human imagination has taken AI and has created a track using artificial intelligence and able to take music to the next level. One of the, the another song that it may be more along everyone's taste, the last Beatles song. Has anyone, did anyone release the Beatles? Oh, I got a hand back there. Anyone re realize the Beatles released a song like a few weeks ago? All AI, correct? All AI. I've seen several people going, heck yeah, yeah. Ringo, John, Paul, and um, who did I forget? George, yeah. Poor George, poor guy. He was always forgettable, like kind of like Ringo. But anyway, they're back. And it's all because of AI. So who had the imagination to say, and I think we've all said it, we all have our favorite bands that are gone. And we would like to hear that one last track. For me, it would be Prince. Would be, if Prince were back, I don't need holographic Prince, I just need vocal Prince. And with the power of my imagination and the power of AI, I can definitely make that happen. And we have to think about AI and the fact that it's not ruining our imaginations. It's allowing us to make our, uh, what we imagine come true, just about anything. Where are my Star Wars fans at? Star Wars, Star Wars, you've seen it, love it. Rogue One, best example of AI. Ah, guys like, yep. Rogue One, anyone seen Rogue One? Rogue One is AI, because it's got deep fakes in it. I'm watching Rogue One with my wife in the theater, and is it Moff? Tarkin? Isn't it Tarkin? We'll just say Tarkin. Peter Cushing, for you old school actors that acted in the movies with, oh gosh, almost, I was going to say Count Dooku. Who's the guy that plays Count Dooku? Um, Sauron. Christopher Lee. So I'm looking at it. I'm looking at Tarkin in Rogue One, and I'm like, oh my God. And my wife said, what is the problem? I'm upset enough that you made me come watch this movie anyway. And I'm looking at Tarkin, Peter Cushing's face, and I'm like, holy cow, that guy died 20 years ago. And they are using a deep fake to create Governor Tarkin in Rogue One to allow the continuity of Rogue One and A New Hope, which is the original Star Wars, if you just didn't pay attention to the trilogy. Same thing at the end of the movie. There's a famous face, let's, let's bring this up first. Who in here has not seen Rogue One? Now, have you not seen it because you don't give a damn about what happens in the movie? Or, oh, there we go. I'm not gonna ruin it. There's a famous character who is deep faked at the very end of the movie. Who, and you couldn't have made it happen, but it happened. Another example of our AI in imagination is the current Indiana Jones movie, The Dial of Destiny. AI, well not AI Harrison Ford, but is it realistic for an 80 year old, 80 year old Indiana Jones to be running around cracking the whip? Only thing he's probably gonna be doing is cracking his back, right? right? They're not gonna buy into the movie. Gray haired, Harrison Ford who can probably barely walk. But with the help of AI, they were able to bring Indiana Jones back to his prime and make that movie happen. Someone imagined it, said, hey, we've got a tool that can make this happen and they went with it. So I'm all about imagination. Of course, now we've got chatbots that are, are real robots that are running around. Because at some point, and I hate to say this, humanity is eventually going to run into Blade Runner, where we have replicants or robots doing things for us. And that's why you see those Boston Dynamic robots dancing and jumping through hoops and shooting guns and doing stuff. It's because we want them to do the grunt work. Someone imagined, hey, can you imagine a world where we can send things into coal to harvest coal and bring it out without the loss of human life? That's why we're creating these AI robots. In my opinion, as far as the Mars journeys are concerned, screw sending out those little remote control cars, that's basically what they are, on Mars, and let's send us a Boston Dynamic robot that can walk the surface of Mars with a nuclear battery, and that way we don't have to endanger human lives. 
Same thing with exploration around the, the solar system. If there's particular planets that we want a man's eye view, let's send a robot. But it takes imagination to make that happen, and it's a lot easier that we can save our lives and not have astronauts die and send a robot that we may be a little um, sad about, but it's going to happen. Interstellar. Has anyone seen Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey? Awesome movie, right? For those, it, then this isn't going to ruin it completely for those who haven't seen it. But my question is this. Why didn't NASA in that movie Interstellar send only the robots to those distant planets rather than having real live humans? Can anyone answer that for me? Why do they send humans? No one knows. I think it's stupid. I'm just going to say it like that. But anyway, AI can only exist because we're feeding the machine. Tools like ChatGPT, Bard, and Bing, Bada Boom, Chat, are in existence because of human imagination. Someone imagined, hey, it'd be great to talk to a device and make the Google experience a lot easier rather than having to go site after site after site. So we can't say that it's AI going to ruin our imagination because we're the ones feeding AI. That is all human, a human information that is fed in the AI tools that's keeping it going. And I think that explains why AI is imperfect because we're Im imperfect as people are concerned. So AI is going to be imperfect itself. We're feeding the monster. It's only going to be as good as we are. And that's why we can't succumb to AI taking away our creative process because in order for AI to function, we have to use our imaginations in order to drive AI. So the question is, where did imagination go? We're in this world of screens. Are we still creative? And we are, it hasn't gone anywhere at all. And I know we think about that because when it comes to social media, we think about when we see memes, we are like, we're just stealing stuff, right? We see it, we're creating it, we're creating content. So we're the ones fueling the world of imagination as far as screens are concerned. It hasn't gone anywhere. We're the creators. We're not gods, but we are creators. And we are the ones that are making AI happen. So I think when you have the conversation with people about AI, is AI going to take away my job? Is AI going to limit what I'm able to do in life. And I'm going to say no, because we are people. And we are physical beings that need to interact with physical beings. Why are we here at this conference as opposed to doing this conference virtually? We want to interact with people. We want to touch people appropriately. Okay. Yeah. And clear that out now, fellas. <laughs> We're not a football team. You can't be going around smacking butts and going, good job, right? We all have to, we, but we all want to connect. We all want that human experience. And so therefore, AI is never going to replace people entirely in, the, in a system. When it comes to businesses, people do business with people. You can have your company brand out there, but unless you're Target, Walmart, or... I can't think of another big box store. I almost said Best Buy, but they're, I don't know, they're sinking. But anyway, unless you're Target or, or Walmart, then people are going to go with the human experience rather than I can get toilet paper real cheap at Walmart or Target, right? That's the way it goes. Now, I want you to think about this. When we look at the cosmos, do you know that there are two man-made satellites that are past our solar system? Does anyone know what they are? Okay, and what's the Star Trek one? Ah, yes, that's right. And V'ger's out there too, right? No, that's Voyager 1. That is, oh, is that Voyager 1? I thought it was Voyager, I'm really doing my best William Shatner. I thought that was Voyager 6. My God, Scotty, Bones, isn't that Voyager 6? So anyway, we have two man-made satellites that were created in the days before AI. And uh, most NASA stuff that was created in the 60s and 70s your smartphone has more computing power than any of those satellites that are floating in space today. And believe it or not, both of those satellites are outside of our solar system and they're still operating close to 50 years later. So you can't tell me that AI is here and going to ruin our imaginations because it's not. Because we're humans, 
we are creative and we're going to keep the creative process going. I keep hitting the wrong button on the slides. Now, I like Einstein, even though he was a jerk to his wife. Did anyone know that? Einstein was a jerk to his wife. And I, you know, he was a genius, but he wasn't a human guy. But what he has to say about imagination is absolutely true. Imagination is more important than knowledge because imagination takes you to the next level. How many of you are addicted to hacks on social media? Like there's a hack for like mopping the floor or a hack for washing your car or cleaning out your car. I love those because it doesn't mean that you are intelligent. It means that your brain gets the creative juices flowing unless you're my brother-in-law who just really can't think his way out of a paper bag, you know? True story, we had a stop to drain in our bathroom downstairs. And I went to one of those hacks and said, hey, all we need to do is pour some hot water down the drain. It's gonna clear the clog, right? Not Martin. Martin said, hey, we're gonna have to knock the sheetrock out behind the bathroom, behind the shower to get saw the pipe so that we can unclog the drain. See, clearly he knew how to do all that stuff, but it's like Einstein's quote. It's imaginations more important than knowledge. So you have to use it and you have to embrace it and understand how it's going to work in our world. Now, when you go forward in life, AI is here, but I want all of you to remember to rely on your own creative juices when it comes to things. Yes, you can use Midjourney, you can use Crayon, you could use even Canva to create those images. But I want you in this AI chat GPT world that we live in to always think creative and think outside the box. Now, I'm not going to chastise you when you have to rely on AI to come up with creative content. But in the world that we live in, we need to still rely on our own imaginations to help take us to the next level. And then to wrap things up, I think this states it all. The power of imagination makes us infinite or infinite or infinite is the right term. So I want you to walk with that. I want you to think about that and I want you to continue moving forward AI isn't going to kill our creative process because if you're able to still mess around with action figures in Legos and create scenarios for those action figures and create uh, masterpieces with Legos, then it ultimately shows that our imagination is making us infinite because without humans, there would be no AI. Without any human thing that you can touch and feel, we can build whatever we want to. We can accomplish our dreams and we can make our reality our own perfect reality. So with that said, I appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much. Take a couple questions. Do I have questions? Oh, do you want to take a couple of questions? Of course I'll take